And we are back on this August 9th, 2012 Thursday edition. A few weeks ago, we had a very interesting author and researcher and a man who's had some amazing experiences in his life that he can firsthand tell us about. Larry Pinckney and his amazing website is blackactivistwritersguild.org or blackactivistwg.org. And he's from the original uh, you know, real Black Panther Party, not from my humble opinion, the modern kind of FBI one that in many respects is kind of like the white supremacist groups that just made, make everybody look stupid and get everybody fighting with each other. But I wanted him to recap not just what he went through with COINTELPRO, because it's back now, worse than ever against everybody, basically. I wanted to get his take on some of the other stories, because his story and others came out in Congress. It's been certified these dirty tricks were engaged in. Uh, we see an RT article today, Occupier charged with terroristic felony for protesting in front of bank. Uh, the federal court just ruled yesterday that they can put you in free speech zones. I've had awesome police tell me, you can't protest out front the governor's mansion, we're going to arrest you. And I said, hey, you've lost lawsuits. Go ahead and arrest me. Well, now I guess they will. I mean, they criticized Putin for doing this, but now it's okay here. Uh, so he's really one of the most famous uh, Black Panthers ever, Larry Pinckney, and he uh, joins us now. We're also going to bring up this viral video covered by the Daily Mail, you name it, uh, of people visiting the abortionist, and he says, uh, hey, we got to keep abortion going. Nobody wants these ugly black babies. Are you going to adopt them? Um, I want to get his view on that because whatever's tested out in the black community, even if there's people out there who are into this divide and conquer, it ends up being brought to your community. So, uh, plus, I just, I don't care what kind of baby you are. I mean, this idea of kill babies, they're worthless, is really scary. We see these eugenicists now saying kill babies up to age three. You know, big bioethics forums, uh, uh, medical papers are coming out saying this. They're saying get rid of old people. I mean, this is really a nightmare system. And we are joined uh, by researcher Larry Pinckney. Uh, people really loved you on the radio show. And it's great to have you back here with us today, Larry. Um, there's a lot to cover here. But just briefly, recapping who you are, your experience, Experiences and, and what COINTELPRO is uh, in your experience. Well, thank you. First of all, I want to say to you, Alex, you are my friend and my brother, and you are a warrior. And that's what we, we need, more people's warriors. Thank you so much for having me. As far as my background is concerned, I am, as you said, a veteran of the Black Panther Party, the original real Black Panther Party. And I write as an editorial board member uh, and, and columnist, national columnist, with blackcommentator.com, uh, as well as with intrepidreport.com. Uh, but more importantly than me, well, I'll add this. I was imprisoned for 10 years as a result of having been a target of COINTELPRO, C-O-I-N-T-E-L-P-R-O, COINTELPRO, an acronym, counterintelligence program. And there were many thousands of people who were then, and brothers and sisters still are, now target of COINTELPRO. Now, with respect to the program itself, COINTELPRO was set up to, to discredit, to frame, to imprison, to murder, and to, quote, neutralize political dissidents in this nation. Oh yes, this nation, the United States of America. No, we're not talking about Russia or China or Serbia or, no, we're talking about the United States of America, okay? And it was set up, I'm gonna say it again, to discredit, to frame, okay, to, to, to imprison, to murder political dissidents, and that's of all colors. Let me emphasize that. All colors, not just black folks. Now, it's across the board. Black, white, brown, red, yellow. It is across the board. And it is high time that we understand that the real target of this ongoing program, as it has been codified in the so-called NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, the real target signed, by the way, by none other than Barack Obama on December 31st, 2011, when he thought everybody was sleeping or partying. Okay, the real targets are whom? The real targets are all of us across the board. All of us, all colors, both genders. Let's get real, let's be honest. So 
That's what COINTELPRO continues to be about. And because it has been codified, it is even more dangerous now than ever before. COINTELPRO actually began in the 1950s. It was intensified and tweaked in the 1960s, 70s, and early 80s. But now here we are in the so-called 21st century, and we've got this colored clone sitting in the White House signing NDAA, extending Patriot Act. Uh, uh, and by the way, if po folks don't know what NDAA it is, a, is, it is a law that says people, Americans and non-Americans alike, but specifically U.S. citizens can be imprisoned indefinitely without charge, without jury, without judge, and without legal defense. Hey, don't talk to me about Obama or anybody else in the system, be they Democrats or Republicans, talking about democracy. This is not democracy. This is a subversion of democracy. And COINTELPRO continues today. It has been tweaked in 2012. And we need to wake up, stop being manipulated, stop being divided, stop being pimped, stop being fools. We're not hamsters. I always say this. We're not hamsters. We're not laboratory rats. We are thinking, reasoning human beings. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm off on a rant. Sorry. No, no, you're right. And, and you know, in this continuum, because it's been in the news that they're bringing COINTELPRO back, I mean, it never went away, but they're intensifying it. Uh, as the system realizes, people are getting mad across the board, and there's a continuum. I mean, it's arresting people for protesting. It's beating them up. It's going to their houses. It's, it's, it's getting them fired. Uh, it's death threatening people. It's planting drugs on them. Uh, it's, it's having women call up to your house and tell your wife that you've gotten them pregnant. I mean, I've had a lot of that stuff happen to me. I've, I, I've seen it happen to others. Uh, I mean, I told you the story when you were on uh, the, the radio. Mike Hansen saw it happen. We went to cover an urban warfare drill in Brooksville, Florida, 12 years ago. We're walking around the neighborhood before the military gets there, and they say, oh, you're Alex Jones. The Army came to my door and said, don't talk to you. You're crazy. And I thought, well, I just was told by an Army tip-off that they were going to do an urban warfare takeover drill, which they now admit they were doing. And then that night, we're there waiting for the, uh, for the troops to roll out on the streets, and a guy just jumps out and starts lighting fires and then trying to blame us for it. We put out the fires, restrain the guy. He runs off with the military. But, I mean... I just can't imagine how they would get the federal government and the military when a journalist tries to go cover what they're doing to set a fire. And I mean, so I, it's scary because they put you in prison. I wonder what they're going to try to do to me. Or then I wonder if they, if they did that 12 years ago, why, why are they not doing that to me now? I mean, is it the calm before the storm? It's, it's kind of scary to interview you because, because it makes me realize what they could do to me. Well, Alex, the fact is, and we have to be blunt about this, my brother, the fact is, is that we are a target. And you are a target. I am a target. We are the big target. But all of us are targets because all of us are leaders. I want to say that again. That's what they don't know how to deal with. You see, they want to be able to decapitate an Alex Jones, to decapitate a Larry Pinckney, to decapitate whomever they can. But you see, what you and I are doing is we are planting seeds with everyone because we are all leaders. And this frightens them. And oh, yeah, they'll plant fires. They'll start fires. They'll plant bombs. They'll plant guns. They'll plant, oh, they'll do anything. This is loathsome. But let's not, you know, let us not become paranoid because the bottom line is, the, 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 the will of the people, as we used to say back in the day in the, in the Black Panther Party, the will of the people is stronger than the man's technology. So government, including our own government, our, in quotation marks, own government, that indulges, that engages in these nefarious, despicable activities, is a government that is not about, it is not about, preserving democracy, it is about subverting, I repeat, subverting democracy. So you, Alex, stay aware. 
Watch your back, just like I have to do, on every level, personal, political, every level. But we need to carry on. We will not let these, with all due respect, if there's such a thing when it comes to the next word I'm about to use, we will not let these swine, these fascists, yes, I use the F word, fascist, because we're talking about 21st century fascism. They don't have to be wearing swastikas or being a part of the SS. Oh, no, they've tweaked it now. They've gone beyond that. They're talking now about, oh, wow, you have to do this. You have to speak in PC terms. PC? What is PC? PC is simply a way of saying you can't express yourself in the way that you know because you might actually make contact with someone I don't give a damn about that. Let's be honest with each other. Let's be honest, like Malcolm said. And any differences that we have, and we will have differences, but any differences that we have, my brother, we will we will deal with those differences. No, exactly. And they want to make everybody so uncomfortable that nobody communicates. Exactly. Uh, um, here's an example, and I don't bring this up because, you know, you're black, I'm supposedly white, whatever it is. I raise this because it upsets me because I have been against abortion because, I mean, I know it's about eugenics population reduction. And from my view, they've taught people it's this wonderful right, and we've got to defend it, and it's so great. But I know what it came out of. I know about Margaret Sanger. But every time I talk to these people, they say, do you want to uh, adopt these black babies? And I go, actually, there are people lined up, too. And now we have a video of one of these abortionists that's hit the news saying this. And then I also know about the British head abortionist lady who was sending all these love letters to Hitler. Paul Watson did an article about this yesterday. But my point is, when I've talked to a lot of black leaders who are establishment, they don't want to discuss the fact that 51% of black people in the last uh, 38 years in this country have not been born. And we, of course, have covered that and talked to the, you know, the few black pastors and others that actually will speak about it. But I'm not like some bleeding heart PC person running off to, you know, earn brownie points that I'm over here, you know, oh, let's save the black children. It does freak me out. When I think about the fact that these people are posing and operating as liberals, and the truth is, like Margaret Sanger said, we're going to hire some black preachers, we're going to act liberal so I can kill these weeds, and then you see them today saying it, uh, and I've run into it many times where I'm like, listen, you need to stop pushing abortion in the schools. The people who want to adopt those kids, and they say, you don't want those black babies. You, it's like a statement. Now we have it on tape again. I don't know if you saw two years ago. People called Planned Parenthood and said, I want to give money to kill blacks. They're like, yes, sir, we'll get, make sure that money's to kill black children. My point is, is they take this and distribute it out to everybody. So even if somebody you know, uh, doesn't like black people, or even if some black folks don't like white people, whatever the case is, the point is, this global system hates everybody, from my experience. And whatever it beta tests in a group that it sees as weak and unpopular, Muslims, whatever, it will then export onto everybody. That's always been the plan. So I'm ranting now. Uh, I'm going to play the. Before we went live here, I played you the clip. You heard it. But let's play it again for the viewers out there. Guys, we have that ready? Uh, let's go ahead and roll that clip one more time where the abortionist is saying to the Christians, the white Christians, uh, he says, you, you, you listen, you adopt these ugly black babies. And they said, yes, let us adopt them. Uh, here's that clip. Don't the put it on the taxpayer, okay? Exactly. I don't wish to pay that? for the baby why? with my so money. Okay, you get it? You would rather profit off of those children? No, 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 I'm not profiting. I, as a taxpayer, do not wish to pay for those babies to be born oh, and brought up and kill we those do. people in Colorado. Go ahead and pay for we that. Do. Let me see you adopt one of those yes, ugly no, black no, babies, we okay? We do, we do. You tell us we'll adopt them. Yeah, go, go ahead. Adopt we'll those babies, give okay? Us a chance. Take them off the taxpayers' money, chance. okay? Give us a chance to adopt them. But, but I didn't know that it was a black person they said did the shootings in Colorado. I thought the Patsy was a white guy. But, I mean, I mean there he is saying, uh, abort, you know, then, then you adopt the ugly black babies. I, I, know, I thought black babies are pretty darn cute like all the other babies. But, uh, again, there's this idea going on here that, that, well, I mean, there it is. What do you say to that? Well, what I say to that, Alex, is anything they can do, as despicable, as, as, as utterly ridiculous as it is, anything they can do or say, 
to keep us divided and fighting against each other. I mean, come on, come on. You, you know, you are black, the black babies, you are black, you know, it's almost like people saying, oh, I love Obama. Why? Because he's black. I mean, let's stop being ridiculous here and let's stop, start actually thinking. Let's start critically thinking. And the bottom line is, like you said, it's not about black babies or uh, you know, white babies, brown babies, yellow babies, red babies. It's about humanity. And when people, you know, go off into this ridiculous, I mean, this is so absurd. With all due respect, my brother, this is so absurd. And I'm not saying you, I'm saying that clip. You know, here are people out here talking this nonsense when they should be honing in on the common interests of everyday, ordinary, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. No, I agree, but let me ask you this question because you've been in this field from the start of the time you were born. Why does the eugenicist New World Order crowd really have it out for black folks worldwide? Because you are the apple of their eye. I mean, they want to kill everybody, and they say that, but they really want to kill folks from Africa. Well, I mean, from your research, why is that? Well, you know, let me, I'm glad you said folks from Africa because, you know, you notice I always call you my brother. And I do that not only politically, but I do it personally. As far as I'm concerned, Africa is the mother of civilization. Therefore, I do not refer to myself as a, quote, African-American. I refer to myself as a black American. Why? Simply because we are all African-Americans, excuse me. You, whether you're white and, uh, uh, you know, black, brown, red, yellow, you know, turquoise, we all come from Mother Africa, and we all live on Mother Earth. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is that we need to understand that our struggle is a united struggle. The eugenics, they can play all that they want. They're going to come up with, you know, even as we're talking right now, Alex, I'm sure they're working on yet another plan. Malcolm X used to say they're always planning like, in, as if in a laboratory, always planning, what can we do next to keep these rats divided? You know what? We need to be planning, what can we do next to keep ourselves united, strong, and powerful, and as a people, collectively as a people. So I agree. Know, then what do we do to get united? Because there's so much divide and conquer going on out there. I mean... <laughs> And then the ruling class are inbred and insane. I mean, you inbreed a dog, they go crazy. I mean, so, so what do you do? What you do is, first of all, turn off that damn mainstream, what I call corporate stream media. That media is nothing but a propaganda arm that Goebbels and Hermann Goering would be incredibly proud of today. Turn off the corporate stream media. Tune in to programs that are going to give you a serious alternative view or views, plural, not just one view, but views. You know, we need to stop being laboratory rats. I agree. All of us. They want to limit our options, and that's what I say. People say, you have one guest on one day saying one thing and then another guest the next day, and I go, yeah, I want to learn. I want to hear all the ideas. I want to be challenged. I don't want to just hear mainline conservative talk radio, the same thing over and over again, or NPR, the same thing over and over again. When, you, when it gets down to it, it's limited choices trying to keep us on the reservation. That's right. The reservation plantation. That's what I refer to it as. The reservation plantation. And as long as they can keep us on the reservation slash plantation, then what are we? We're laboratory rats. It's time for us to take our destiny into our own hands as we the people. Let's make the Constitution real. Let's take it back. Let's tweak it. Let's turn it into something, as we used to say in the Black Panther Party, that really represents all power to the people, Alex. All power to the people. Not these blood-sucking corporatists. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. But but Let's go back here because... They try to radicalize groups, and by radicalize, make them say ridiculous and stupid things. They do them to all groups. They try to do it with us, so they take things we say out of context. Right. But, 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 but going back, because we talked about this briefly last time, and I saw people commenting, wanting to know more, because I know you're an, you know, more of an expert on this than I am by far, probably one of the leading experts. Malcolm X, incredibly articulate, super smart guy, uh, amazing oratory skills, j just like you have. We know why they put you in jail for no reason uh, with COINTELPRO. Uh,
you know, they're scared of the, well, the pen is mightier than the sword, the voice, the information. Yeah. But yeah. when he did realize that it was divide and conquer they wanted, that's when they had to get rid of him because they built him up because he was helping divide and conquer. As soon as he was about unity, they had to kill him. Elaborate uh, on, on that and where you think we'd be today if people like Malcolm X hadn't been killed. Well, thank you. That is incredible. That's an incredible question. The fact is, is that Brother Malcolm evolved. Malcolm was talking, you know, about, you know, kill Whitey and the white devil. Well, I don't think Malcolm actually ever, ever said kill Whitey, but he's a white devil, blah, 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 blah. The government loved it. Oh, yes, he's wonderful. That's my boy, you know. But as soon as Malcolm evolved and he realized that, no, that's not what it's about. It's about collective unity. We're human beings, all of us here. All of these, these are my sisters and my brothers. Oh, my God. Then the government said, oh, no, you've got to eliminate this man. Why, this man is out here talking about unifying the people against, against who? Against them. Against them. And that's right. And that's the whole thing of what you're doing, what I am trying to do, what others are trying to do, is to unify the people. We don't have a magic wand. We don't have a yellow brick road to follow. But what we do have is our common sense and our human goodwill. And we must stop letting these insidious, insipid pieces of manure called the, the government, I call them the corporate syndicate, you know, government, really subvert everything that we try to do. All this left-right nonsense, hey, dispense with this left-right. You know, false paradigm. This is a false paradigm. It is a paradigm to keep people divided. Democrat, Republican. They're Republican rats. They're rats. R-A-T-S. All of them. Let's deal with the people. Let's have, we need, it is time for a second American revolution. And this time, that includes all the people. Black, white, brown, red, yellow. All the people, male and female, my brother. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that under no circumstances do we allow these insidious pieces of manure to keep us divided, to keep us subjugated, to keep us in fear of each other, because that's what it's about. Whether it's Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, or whatever other Martian they come up with. It's not about the people, but we, we the people, are the only ones who I are I like the fact that you call them Martians because if you really look at Barack Obama and Mitt Romney and who backs them and what they really stand for, it's identical. The rhetoric's a little bit different, but, but I mean, it's getting so close. And then I know all these Republicans are like, we've got to vote for him. Uh, you know, and, and, and these mainline Republicans, they really, a lot of them do believe in freedom, all this stuff. They're just misled. They think Obama's the communist that's going to get them. They don't understand he's financed by big mega banks and the commie thing is only one level of it. And then I talk to people that are like, well, Obama's a liberal. And then, like you said, 95% of black folks voting for him saying, well, and, and, then, and then none of it got delivered. But it's, it's, it's like Coke, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy. It's not a real choice. It's this, it's this fake fake selection that they give us and what do you say to people out there because they're going to say well if you're not saying vote for obama what vote for mitt romney no the point is the whole thing is a fraud so i mean right. what do you say to uh you know black folks in the community you talk to that are like well i mean you were imitating oh i love obama i mean what do you say to him i say to him to remember the words of dr martin luther king who said and i quote we would judge people on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. So when black people say, I love Obama cause he black. <laughs> no, I'm gonna just say it. You know it's true. He black. What, excuse me? I didn't know <laughs> that I was voting or supporting someone based on their pigmentation. I thought I was supposed to support someone, okay, based on what? Their character, what they have done, what their principles are, what their integrity is, okay? That's what I say, not only to black people, but to white people, to brown people, to red people, to yellow people. That's what I say to all people. And, and, and let me just throw this in real quick, Alex. Yes, I call them Martians, and by them I'm talking about 
the Mitt Romneys and the Barack Obamas. I'm speaking, of course, euphemistically, because we know the media are honing But on they that. are alien compared to the rest of the people. They're part they of that. They are. Yeah, yeah. They are. You're right. You're absolutely correct. They are alien. And we must begin to understand and look at them for what they are, not for what we want them to be. We need to look at them for what they are and act accordingly. My brother, it is so simple. It is not, we, you don't need to be, I don't need to be a rocket scientist, a physicist to understand that. Going back, because I wonder how they get military, FBI, others to go and frame innocent people, because just at an instinctive level or a spiritual level, I guess you call it God-fearing, uh, it, I don't even want to do bad, but, but if I even think or imagine doing something bad consciously, I can like feel the fear. I guess what you mean, like, like man, that's bad mojo, whatever you want to call it, bad karma, bad reboot you sow. I could not imagine, even my enemies, it's almost like a sense of pride that if you know, my enemy got in my face and hit me, I'm going to kick their butt, but I'm not going to go set somebody up, and I just wonder how people lie about people knowingly, how they try to destroy their lives, how they would put you and others, because it came out in Congress, there's been books written on it, I mean, the whole story's long, obviously, in prison, I've had them try it with me. How does somebody get up in the morning and say, I'm gonna go frame Alex Jones or Larry Pinckney? I mean, who, I almost feel sorry for those people. And it's not because I'm goody two-shoes, it's because I'm God-fearing. Well, I think, it is number one, Alex, because you're human. We need to understand that these people have lost their humanity. I want to say that again. These people have lost their humanity. And what this insidious piece of manure government, corporate government that we have and have had for some decades now does, what they do is they play on human frailty, human weaknesses. They will play on you, you, your family, your friends, your associates, and that's how they do it. That's how they turn people. They turn them. I don't think people generally are bad or evil. I think people are turned, and, and they're turned. That's what COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, was and continues to be all about. Unless, of course, we're talking about somebody like Barack Obama, who was groomed by the CIA, long before he became a presidential candidate. But I'm talking about the everyday, ordinary, black, white, brown, red, or yellow person. Sure, isn't Obama, though? Because Bush could hardly read off a teleprompter. I mean, Obama <laughs> really is, or Barry Sotero, whoever he really is, he is the candidate 2.0 because he's slick, he can read off a teleprompter, he's got a nice voice, you know, he's handsome, and, and it's all fake, but he can project and act like he's got a soul, you wonder, who is that guy? Because with a Richard Nixon or somebody, the evil, or, or, a, or, a, or a Bush, the evil shines through. And now as Obama loses, I guess, the narcissistic support he had, he, he acts a little more evil and stuff. But, I mean, take Mitt Romney. He comes off on the surface as charming, but he's incredibly evil. I mean, these guys are, are the candidate 2.0. Yes, yes. And the fact of the matter is, is that whether we're talking about Obama or Romney or any other puppet that they put up there, because that's what they are. They're nothing more than puppets. You know, we have to understand that they are put there to project an image. Look, I don't give a damn. The people don't give a damn about an image. We give a damn about the reality, about trying to live, about trying to pay our rent, our mortgages, about trying to buy our food, about trying to take care of our children and give them a decent education, about trying to live in a secure, secure environment that's human, human, not, not some kind of mechanized, mechanoid machine environment. And that's what they're trying to bring us. When I say they, I'm talking about the Democrats and the Republicans. And it's time for the people, we the people, all power to the people, take it back. Take it back. We've got to do that. You know, and that's what I say. And Alex, I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say it to you publicly. My brother, beware. But don't ever give up. Beware. You know, I always say to my sisters and brothers, my friends and close political quote-unquote comrades, and comrades is not a communist term, by the way. Comrade just means someone that you are close to, you respect. 
You know, police have comrades. They call each other comrades. No, but I understand. All, anytime something bad uses a word, then the word's taken away forever, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I, I just want to say to you and to anyone out there who's watching this, keep strong. Watch your back. That's what I always say to my brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers. Watch your back, but keep going. Don't let these suckers make you paranoid because that's what they want to do. Oh no, I mean I mean I'm I'm sure I'm beyond that. I, I just it freaks me out at a at a spiritual level to just realize that there really are this many evil people or people they can buy for right. money because a lot of people that serve the system do do it out of fear. Like like yeah. we we've reached a crisis level now where it turns out the IRS is handing out all these fake tax ID numbers that they then merge with real people's social security numbers and the right. IRS agents have finally blown the whistle and said we're told once somebody's had their number stolen, we're just going to go ahead and charge the real person because we know they're not criminals and in the system, and we're going to destroy their life and take their house and bank account. And that finally is so evil that the IRS agents are blowing the whistle. But right. it's like, what type of government comes up with that where they give out fake numbers that can then be attached to real people? To I mean, what type of government gets together, we now learned 12 years ago, Bloomberg reported, to get the death benefits of dead troops to steal it from their widows. I mean, it, it, it's, it's you, I mean, the more I study evil, it's just like, what? It, it's, it's just, I, I mean. <sighs> Alex, 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 the type of government, to answer your question, that does this is a repressive anti-people government. Is a government that only wants to maintain power. They don't give a damn about serving the people. They're not public servants. They serve themselves. They serve themselves on huge platters, and they talk a lot of baloney, a lot of nonsense, a lot of unmitigated BS, if I may say that on your show, okay, that, that really is about serving and helping themselves, and they will do anything, and I repeat, anything to maintain their power and their position and their prestige, and they'll use it, they'll use anybody, any way, anyhow. Well, but let me raise this to you then. Studying history uh, and philosophy and all the areas, you know, that you've uh, delved into, you um, where do you see it in the scheme of things going? Because I see power elites who go power mad and just have to exercise the power because they got it, and they end up blowing holes in their own you know, boat's bottom. And I see them admittedly getting ready for martial law and takeovers and now admitting everything we've talked about. Now it's out in the open. I've become kind of made you know, passe by the fact that this is so out in the open. Where, where do you see this craziness going where they're just robbing and stealing and, 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 and I mean, don't they know the elites have done this before and actually that they're the biggest threat to themselves? Yes, they do know that. They do know that. But they are so, they are what we call, what I call, insatiably, insatiably greedy. I mean, it, it's like a person who has a disease where the more you eat, the more you have to eat. These people are pathological. They are pathological. They are sick. And of course they know that. They do know that. Look at what they're doing to Mother Earth, to the planet. They're wiping it out. Do they care? Well, on one hand, they say they do, but look at what they're their actions demonstrate. Their actions demonstrate that they don't give a damn. Why? Because it's more money, money, money. I'm going to make millions, billions, trillions. Okay. So this we have to understand that. But the not and I said understand, not accept. We don't have to accept it. We never accept it. But we have to understand that that's where these robotrons, you know, are coming from. They are sick. Pathological no, no, you're right. The, the so-called elite themselves, because I've been around them and read their writings, been, been at some parties and run into like pretty high-level people, they are the most empty, robotic, uh, I mean, they are androids, and they know we're concerned about all the problems in the earth, GMO, toxic waste, deforestation, overfishing, de uh, played out soils. Their answer is use all our concern as a power grab to tax carbon dioxide plants breathe, make it all about that to give them money, Right. to double our power prices, and right. then ignore all the real stuff they're doing. And I'm like, what are you going to do with all this money and power? Don't you even care about your grandchildren, lunatics? No, they don't. 
When it really gets down to it, they don't. And if they don't care about their grandchildren, what the hell do you think they care about us? Well, people, in fact, I always say they don't care about us, and then I catch myself. No, they do care. They enjoy hurting people and, and, and yeah. coming to that realization. But I'm just, I, do you think there's any hope in being able to reach the children of the elite? I mean, is there any way through the system to get them to pull back? Absolutely, there's hope in being able to reach the children of the elite. The, some, and I emphasize some, let me be clear about that, not all by any stretch of the imagination, but some, there is hope. Because what we have to continually appeal to is their humanity. We have to continually appeal to their principles. We have to, con albeit they may not have been, they may not have been instilled with much principles or many principles, but they do have some humanity, at least some of them. And yes, we can. And whether it's the children of the elite or not, frankly, the people that I'm more concerned about, whether it's the ch beyond the children of the elite, are the everyday people. It's like a pyramid. We are on the bottom of this damn pyramid. And we are billions and billions of people. And we are the ones who have to move. And when we move, that point at the top of that pyramid is going to tip over. But we have to do it collectively. No, listen, I totally agree. I spend all my time trying to reach out to the grassroots. Uh, the, the establishment tells us we don't have power because we have all the power. My issue is I just study history, common sense. I see what the technocrats are doing. I mean, they're really the alpha maggots. They're like cancer, programmed to take it all, as Max Kaiser says. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just trying to say, do you have any sanity? Do, do, you, do you think you're going to escape the technocracy you're building? So, so, uh, so, so I mean, my question was, I mean, to you is, I don't spend any time really trying to reach out to the establishment, but lately I've been thinking, should we spend some time trying to do that? Because, because they act like we're not even here. They write their white papers admitting they're putting cancer viruses in the vaccines and just communicate how they're killing us in all these public papers. And I'm here reading them. I'm going, you know, I'm reading this and I'm reading how you're setting up world government, how you plan to kill everybody. Hey, you think that's really good? Idea? And they just keep ignoring us. I mean, I guess... The only way you get their attention uh, is because, uh, I mean, I'm a guy who is for not offensive violence. It's not like I follow Gandhi or, you know, you know, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, because I will, if I'm attacked, I will defend myself. But I'm not offensively looking for trouble. But right. other than that, is there anything other than violence that gets these people's attention? I don't know. I think that that beyond violence, I can say this that when we become organized collectively, that gets their attention, and they're going to do everything they can to try to neutralize, words from COINTELPRO, quote unquote, neutralize us being organized. Make those, you know, you know, get those niggas, get those crackers, get those specs, get those whatever, you dig? Keep them disorganized, and they'll do it any way they can, through their corporate stream media, through their government, corporate government propaganda. That's what they do. You know, but once the people bump hip to that, become aware of that, become cognizant of that, hey, their little time becomes limited. And therein lies my hope. Because I think more and more and more people are becoming cognizant of it. And you're not going to see it on PBS or Fox News or NBC or ABC or NPR. No, they're not going to do that because basically when it comes down to it, fundamentally, they're all the same. But we're going to see it on programs like this where you and I and others are talking. Human directly. beings are face to face, getting right. past all the labels, all the That's walls, right. all the That's garbage, right. getting real. But but expanding on that, you watch Fox News, it's basically be scared of the black people. Mm -hmm. And then, but you watch, you, but, but, but what I've learned is the real hardcore racist are the so-called liberals. When you watch MSNBC, they are drooling with nothing but race warfare, e endless garbage, fight with each other, spewing it in all directions. And you can tell, I've talked to some of them off record too, they know exactly what they're doing. And they're just hardcore operatives. I mean, uh, what's your view of MSNBC? I mean, I, mean, I watch it, it's sick. Well, you just summed up my view of MSNBC. It is sick. 
It is a part of the power paradigm. It is a part of the power elite maintaining that phony, fake, fraudulent, left-right paradigm, MSNBC. Please. <laughs> Please. Well, they're also financed by all the big weapons makers, but then they're dancing around, and then they're praising all these wars. I mean, look at Obama, the Peace Prize winner. They intended the whole time to make war as peace, 1984. Your view on that? Well, he was a Peace Prize winner, but what people didn't understand was they spelled peace a different way. You see, you and I spell peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, but they spell peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, mm -hmm. you dig? And, 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 and so he's a Peace Prize winner, all right, that predator drone, warmongering, NDAA signing, blood curdling, don't, uh, let me just stop right there. The bottom line is, so whether it's Romney or Obama, but Obama has actually demonstrated what he's about. And what he's about is subterfuge, war, and repression. And it's time for us to wake up to that. I don't care about his color. His color is irrelevant. Whatever happened to this? Because, I mean, I mean, there really were people who called themselves on the left who had humanity for my research and just what I saw 15, 20 years ago. Now... Yeah, I mean, there's just no opposition, because I, mean, I guess Bush was so bad, it was fun to hate him, and then Obama comes along, it just doesn't fit the script, so now I hear people on the left going, you know what, torture's good, secret arrest is good, all these wars are good, because we're bringing democracy to Libya and Syria, no you're not, you're, I mean, they have Al-Qaeda lining up, and I'm not just saying this because you're black, it's what's happening, lining up the black people, Tarpley was there, Dr. Tarpley, when this was all happening, lining them up and shooting them, and then you, you mention this to the so-called left, they just laugh at you. I mean, it's incredible. It is. It is incredible. And I'm going to say it, I'm, I've said it repeatedly, and I'm going to keep on saying it and let the chips fall where they may, my brother. But the fact of the matter is, I'm out of the left, I come out of the left, and I'm saying to the left, that the vast majority of the so-called left in this country are hypocrites. They have shown, they have demonstrated that they are hypocrites. They will not call what they see out. They want to talk about, oh, we're anti-war. Well, if you anti-war, how can you be pro-Obama? That's a contradiction in terms. Come on, people. It was okay. You know, it, it, it was not okay, I should say, when G.W. Bush and his predecessors did it, but somehow it's okay with Obama. Obama, please, get a life, get real, be honest, stop being hypocrites. I'm saying that to my brothers and sisters in the left. I'm saying stop being hypocrites. Be honest with yourselves. Regain your humanity. And yes, Alex, there was a time when there were many more in the left, quote unquote, who were, who did have principles and, and integrity. Where did it go? I'm not sure. Well, and, and speaking of the right and the left and just all these control groups, if they don't instinctively know that all this evil that's been done in our name with our money is not, not just going to sit there, the universe, God, I've learned this in my life, but I can feel it. I, don't, I, I mean, in my gut, I sh shake with concern for this country and the rest of the world for all the evils we've allowed to happen. Because even if we oppose it, it's still going to be brought down on us. I mean, and, and, and same thing for the ruling of class. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of elitists, and they're very unhappy people, and it's because they're not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and th they cynically think, that it's this social Darwinism, survival of the fittest, that the more ruthless they are, that they're actually helping the world. And, 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 and no, they're not. Any ruling class that has to dumb people down so it can rule them is a pathetic group of scum. <clears throat> if they're so high and mighty, they should want to build up humanity. We can go to the stars together. But they yeah. don't care. They want to dumb everything down and hoard it all and then destroy themselves in the process. Exactly. Just, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, Always great to have Larry Pinckney on. I hope people visit uh, your site, Thank Black you. Activist, uh, writersguild.org, blackactivistwg.org. 
They can also find the book there that was written by a scholar about COINTELPRO and your story and so much more. Thank you so much for spending time with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Stay strong. Watch your back. Stay strong and carry on. All right. Thank you. Well, folks, that is, you know what? I forgot to ask him. Is he gone yet? Is he gone yet? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I, I didn't plan this, but I've got to ask you just briefly for folks. Yeah. It, it's, it's anticlimactic. But just so groups out there like militias can, and, and others can understand how they get radicalized and taken over. Briefly, just to, as a history lesson, and I know you've got some of this on your site, what have they done to the modern Black Panther Party, new Black Panther Party that we see today that, that is the stuff that they were, you know, wanting Malcolm to say before about, you know, kill, 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 kill the white babies, the military manufacturing center, you know, stuff like that. What is the brief, cause, I mean, because it's, you know, you're a busy guy, we've got you here. Briefly, just in a couple minutes, three, four minutes, what happened with the real Black Panther Party versus the new one? The real Black Panther Party was utterly decimated by uh, the, the, the machinations, the, the tactics and strategies of COINTELPRO. People were murdered. First of all, they put in infiltrators. People were murdered, whether we're talking about Fred, Fred Hampton, whether we're talking about people who were in prison falsely, like uh, Geronimo, Judaga Pratt. Well, I mean, I could go on and on and on. That's what the real Black Panther Party was about. Our breakfast programs, who knows about them? Our service programs, our free medical clinics, who knows about them? People don't know about that because the government media and propaganda, you know, made sure that they didn't. Now, then you have these so-called new Black Panthers, and I say so-called in heavy quotation marks, yeah, Show me your breakfast programs nationally. Show me your free medical programs nationally. Show me your health programs. Show me the fact that, as we said in the Black Panther Party, all power to the people. We didn't say all power just to black people. We said all power to the people. So you know what? Racist is as racist does. Okay, bottom line. Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party formed in October of 1966, was about serving the people body and soul. What this group of folks are, hey, I sure as hell can't tell you what they are, but I know what they're not. They're not about serving the people collectively. Well, I see them doing exactly what the white supremacist groups do, which it comes out are always fed run. It's just about having two radical groups to put out there so everybody's scared of each other to get us fighting. Mm-hmm. You got it. You've said it. You've summed it up. I couldn't put it any better. Well, I wanted to get your take on it. I know there's more at Black Activist, uh, writersguild.org. Again, now we are going to end the show. It's kind of like a concert where they come back out for one more song. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Stay strong. Watch your back. 